Hey folks, it's uh, George Kovac. It's uh, March 24th and it's supposed to be spring here in Halifax. Normally I do my uh, my video in my backyard, but my backyard's got about uh, four feet of snow, so I don't feel like shoveling, so we'll do it from where I am right now. I wanted to bring up uh, uh, issues surrounding the, the tragic uh, crash in the Alps of the uh, airline that uh, sounds like it was initiating an emergency descent protocol, um, which it didn't recover from. In, in, uh, in airway management and, and emergency medicine and critical care scenarios, we spend a lot of our time appropriately talking about what's our, our knowledge base requirements, what are our skill requirements to f perform uh, properly and, and competently. But more recently, we've, we've had a discussion about, about the context of these decisions. So, uh, you know, the, the psychology and uh, anxiety of uh, taking care of sick patients, how this influences us in the way we take care of patients in need of our skills. Um, in this uh, article that I, I found on, on, uh, on Twitter, um, that a, a pilot of the same Airbus was describing the, the protocols that they had to employ or were trained to employ for uh, uh, such an emergency situation. There's, so there's two things. One is that you have to recognize that there's an issue and, and secondly that we need to, they need to be able to respond to that issue in, in times of ex extreme um, stress. So um, we've, we've, we've taken a look at, at, at things like checklists and, and seen if this can improve patient safety in our, in our performance. The problem with a lot of the checklists that I've seen is that much of what we're being asked to, to look at are things that are pretty obvious. Um, you know, get your suction out, get your drugs ready, etc. But really we have to look at, at the, the whole context of the procedure and say, what are the high risk scenarios that we need to identify? And in my mind, there's, there's probably really two of them. Um, we, we tend to report success um, in the literature. So there's a 99% chance that you're going to be successful in performing rapid sequence intubation. But that's a misrepresentation of the literature because really the important thing you need to be able to respond to is the fact that between 15 and 30% of the time you're going to require a, a second attempt. And anybody involved in a, any second attempt in, in, a, in a rapid sequence uh, scenario and somebody who's sick, um, it's a stressful scenario. You haven't been able to get the tube in place and so obviously um, there's some concern. So what you need to do is to be able to recognize that seeing an epiglottis only view, what's your emergency protocol that you're going to employ in that situation? So. Um, that's the one scenario. The second scenario is recognizing that, that when the patient's in trouble from an oxygenation point of view, if I can't intubate that patient, that's one issue, but if I can't oxygenate that patient, um, that's another situation. And the sensory input for, for this is usually a combination of, uh, of inputs. That's, uh, it's the, the falling saturation, it's the sound of ineffective bag mass ventilation, and often it's a nurse who's uh, um, in the corner of the room uh, yelling the, the falling sats. But all this combine, combines to saying this is an event that we need to respond to immediately. Um, so those are the two things in my mind of, of all of airway management that we need to recognize quickly and have a protocol to employ, make sure that we don't uh, uh, crash and the patient uh, burns in this situation. Um, I'll talk about what those specific responses are in, a, in, a, in, another, uh, um, in another post. But, but ultimately, the sequences that we're going to employ aren't a simple one thing. There, there are multiple things that we need to do. And I think the challenge we have um, as, as educators is to make, is to simplify that response. So here's the cue that you have to respond to and here's the response that you have. So, so when I look at responding to an epiglottis only or grade three view, there's about seven things that I need to do as part of what we call best look laryngoscopy. But the, the challenge is to, to take those seven things and in my brain make them one. And the way we make them one is to do is to convert them into what's called fixed action patterns. 
or again what we're, we're trying to do is is combine the multiple reactive skills into one so that there are a series of, of responses that become one and the way we have to do that is to mentally rehearse and that's what I think we need to do instead of checklists instead of having that you know we have to have X Y or Z just like you'll see high performing athletes before they uh, perform they will close their eyes and have the mental imagery um, in place um, imagining what they're going to do when that competition begins. We need to be able to do that, to sort of sit down, close your eyes before you begin and say, okay, this is my series of responses that I'm going to employ when I see a best, when I see epiglottis only view. This is the series of responses that I'm going to do when I see, uh, when I hear or get that sense of, of uh, difficult bag mass ventilation. Um, I've, I've used this example many times when I've when I've spoken, but again, when when I give you a series of numbers to remember, and here they are, um, it's a six, five, eight, two, one, seven, three, two, four, uh, nine. Okay, I gave you ten numbers to uh, remember. Then I want you to close your eyes right now and repeat those numbers. I'll say about 30% of people can, can actually repeat those numbers after I say it. But if I were to say to you, um, here's a series of, of, uh, t of uh, 10 numbers, it's 902-422-0416. I'd say 90% of people can now repeat those numbers because they're framing that as a phone number, as one number in their brain, and they're able to respond to it. So that's the challenge. We need to take complex tasks and make them simple um, so we can execute them in times of emergency. So that's my uh, little, uh, little rant and, uh, uh, about, uh, about um, I guess, complexity and how we need to simplify it to uh, respond appropriately in, a, in emergencies. Thanks. Hopefully the snow will melt soon.